Hey, this is YourLocalNote.com. My name is Mike Stringer, joined by RJ McKay. We built this website for you, the music listener, to be able to discover new music from the Philadelphia area and also keep up to date with them. And there's many ways you can do that on our site. You can download our free iPhone and Android apps. Just search YLN at their stores. And with that app, you'll be able to stream our station live. All we play is music exclusive to the Philadelphia area. And of course, we have these weekly featured podcasts. And this week, we have Black Dirty from Mount Laurel, New Jersey. And we will begin with a track off their upcoming EP. The song is called Sky Blue Lawn Darts. You are going to hear from Black Dirty on yourlocalnote.com. That is Sky Blue Lawn Darts. We are hanging with Black Dirty, and this is yourlocalnote.com. First and foremost, guys, thanks for coming in. How are you guys doing tonight? Great. Good. Thank you for having us. Very good. Let's go down the line, introduce yourselves, and the role you play in the band. Hello. My name is Tyler Brooks, and I play guitar and sing. I'm Steve Camisi, and I'm the bass player. My name is Brandon Cohill, and I also play guitar. My name is Brandon Little, and I am percussion. <laughs> All right. Um, how did you guys, let's take it back to the beginning. How did you guys get started, meet up, and form Black Dirty? 
I will take that one, fellas. Uh, <laughs> I got some tunes together uh, in my room, just kind of recording stuff and uh, doing it uh, with music software. Had a couple songs, and then I moved back to New Jersey, and uh, a mutual friend of Brandon, the drummer, Brandon, and I uh, got us together. And uh, he was a pain in the butt at first. I couldn't get a hold of him. He was like, you know, oh, Who's this, Brandon? Yeah, right here. <laughs> and then I eventually got him over, and, uh, you know, it was love at first note. And uh, so we jammed it out. And then uh, after that, the next person coming was Cohill, and we worked together. And I think he was talking about wanting to start a band that was like the like the Beach Boys or Surf Rock, like a really up tempo thing. <laughs> yeah. He wanted to start or something, <laughs> All right. which led me, you know, led me on that he knew how uh, he knew how to play guitar. So I was like, okay, well, let me talk to this kid. I talked to him, just like little. He was flaky. I couldn't get him over my house. <laughs> Even worse. No, I, I'll take full responsibility. And, yeah, it, was, and it was just like a girl. It was just like a girl. Like I give him all this attention. Like yo, come over play. And then and then as soon get. as I was like, screw this guy. He's like, yo. You you want jam still? It's, it's called calculated neglect. <laughs> so anyway, you knew what he's doing the whole time. Yeah, it's, right it's in the palm br- of my hand. Right, it's a Brandon thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so anyway, I roped him, and then uh, <laughs> and then we played for a little while, and then it wasn't much longer till uh, Steve and I went to high school together. So I knew him, and then I gave him a ring, and then he was like all about it right at the beginning. Uh, like a boss, and <laughs> came right over. And then from that point on, you know, very good. Uh, why the name Black Dirty? How did that uh, happen? Oh man, <laughs> I think that's you, Brett. You know well, that one? Uh, yeah. Well, me and Tyler work at the same place, and uh, there's this community radio that's on all the time, and there was a commercial on, and we thought the commercial said Black Lawyer. We thought it was uh, uh, a commercial for an attorney. But we thought it yeah. said Black Dirty. Yeah, we thought it said Black Dirty, but he, but said, he said Black. Black lawyer. It was a commercial. Black, black attorney. attorney. Black attorney. <laughs> black. <laughs> yeah. It's another word for We're just lawyer, having Brandon. him tell this story because he sounds the coolest telling the story. He doesn't actually know yeah, it the yeah. best, but continue. <laughs> I was working hard at work. Yeah, you weren't paying attention. Yeah, I was doing my job. <laughs> so anyway, they said uh, they said we found out that said they black attorney, and then uh, before we found that out, I was like going up to people like, "Yo, what's black dirty?" And I'd say to someone, they'd be like, "What the." you say what yeah. <laughs> get all quiet like i said something wrong so it was really cool that people were like instilling all these different meanings so some people were like ooh like it was like sexual some people would just make it up on the spot and some people was racist some people it was just like that's not even a word right. so you got all these different reactions all these different meanings that someone was putting into something that was never said before so i was like hey why not all right. Well, you got an upcoming ep you're going to be going into the studio to record these songs and uh, the first song we heard was Sky Blue Lawn Darts. Uh, the interesting name, first and foremost. What is, that, what is that song about? What can you tell us about that? Uh, lyrically, that song... Um, let me see. It's a tough one. Because uh, most of the time when I do lyrics, you know, I get, I get a single line idea, I write it down, and then that just happens over and over again. So it's almost like a collage. Uh, and lyrically... I try to treat words almost like if I was like painting, so you know the colors would be the words, and they don't necessarily have to be arranged into a logical sentence or a logical complete piece of work storyline. They just have to sound good coming out of your mouth. They have to sound good, you know, necessarily. Now sometimes they do have a theme or something like that, um, but uh, I don't know. I mean, it's really kind of like take it line by line. What what are some lines in there that I could that I could do? Um, the, the the playing the chords. I always thought of that song as oh, like it yeah. was like teaching your girlfriend or a, a, any girl something and her getting these expectations. Yeah, yeah. There was some jealousy in that song. I remember. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So it was about someone else teaching a girl that uh, I like how to play guitar and uh, and those chords playing over and over in my head. That was. Uh, so, so Tyler, you write all the lyrics for the songs? Yes, I do all the lyrics. Okay, then musically, who, how does that, how does that come together? Do you start with the with the music, or is it a, a, a team effort? Someone comes in with a with a you know a lick and says, how, "What do you think of this?" And then it grows from there, or how does that work? Yeah, I mean, I made sure that I never had one answer to that question okay. because you never want to keep people confined. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you, you know, music's just got to be music, and you got to make it. So, so far. The music has always came first. Okay. Um, 
so far. But uh, the the lyrics are generally there technically before the song was ever there, but they never had a melody. They never had a meter or a rhythm. So um, music comes down and then, you know, I pick the lyrics that each line has the correct amount of syllables to fill up the measures evenly. Okay. And from there, I'll develop rhythm and melody. So you'll just write lyrics just to, just to have them. Yeah. And then when the music comes along, you're like, okay, I think I got something that's going to match that. Perfect. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. All right. So then musically, though, it, it's then a team effort. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So uh, someone's going to contribute an idea and then you take off from there. Yeah. And it depends on the song. You know, some of the songs, you know, one person, you know, put a lot into and then other songs, you know, it was uh, everyone piecing together. And the more that the band goes on, the more that it is becoming a group effort as far as everyone okay. doing their parts. When sure. it first started, like I said, I had some songs that I already written. So we all came through. We had those songs already done. So it's like, okay, well, let's get those down. Okay. And now we're, you know, getting into the band format. And that's kind of what defined our style, too. Like, we kind of had a feel for what you were trying to do through what you had already showed us. Mm. And for me, writing guitar parts to go along with his, like, it was more, um, okay, I can kind of see where what you're trying to do with this. And that kind of changed my mentality. Like, because I can't bring surf rock into math. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's go to uh, song number two. It's uh, QWERTY. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about that song? QWERTY. Um, QWERTY was the first complete song that I wrote that involved tapping on the guitar. And uh, as far as guitar-wise, it's like kind of chordy, you know what I mean? Like for, the, for you know, the uh, people who play guitar, uh, it's kind of chordy, you know, I'm holding chords, I'm not really doing individual notes tapping on mm-hmm. the guitar like a piano. Or something. Right, right. Um, lyrically, um, this song was about, uh, I had a, a terrible time where someone in my life had some mental struggles and, you know, they changed because of, uh, you know, some issues that they had going mm-hmm. on in their life. Sure. So uh, it had a lot to do with that person. It's almost like someone dying, but they're still there. You know what I mean? Because like that part of their personality is gone. Yeah, but they've changed. But they've changed so, so, so So the person that you knew is not there anymore. Yeah, so it's almost like a death song, but they're still alive, you know, which is great. So there's still something to appreciate. Yeah, I guess so. You know, this is about the stuff that I lost. Okay, very cool. All right, the song is called QWERTY. We are hanging with Black Dirty on yourlocalnote.com.
The song is called QWERTY. The band is Black Dirty. My name is RJ, hanging out with Mike. This is your localnote.com. All right, guys, uh, let's, uh, let's uh, talk about influences. Tyler, we'll start with you. The number one contribution as far as music taste goes goes to my mom, absolutely, because we drove all the time. I did a lot of traveling when I was little, so mm-hmm. it was whatever was in the, the case of CDs, you know? Right. Which was going to be Steely Dan, Led Zeppelin, James Taylor, you know, a lot, of, a lot of classic rock. Right. And I love it all to this day. But then I had Chili Peppers. Uh, at the same time, we had some newer stuff in there. I got a Kid Rock CD in the case at one point in time, but that disappeared magically. <laughs> okay. Uh, so musically, for, for my music taste, that's uh, where that came from. My love for guitar came from my Uncle Dave because I would beg him to teach me the guitar and he would always say no. So I would have to take his guitar out of the case when he wasn't home and it was kind of like this thing that I couldn't have so I wanted wow. that much more. Right. And then, uh, and then I started to teach myself and... I'd be like, oh, Dave, or my brother Ryan, like, show me the song. I'm like, ah, oh, no, you can't do that. You know, you're too green. So right. then I would just go on the internet because, uh, you know, the, the guitar tabs started coming out on the internet at that mm-hmm. point in time. Very um, cool. Which is weird to say. And I learned the songs, <laughs> so I was like, screw you guys. <laughs> and then uh, the last thing that I would put as far as influences, as far as the style of the music that I'm making now, it's like math, rock, tappy. Um, the whole entire reason why I tap is or the whole reason why it started was this artist who I don't even listen to anymore. And I only listen to one of his songs ever. His name was Justin King, and he like tapped on the acoustic guitar. Steve, the bassist, still listens to him. I'm pretty sure. Um, but he tapped on the acoustic guitar, and I went in my band room one day, and my instructor and some classmates who were the older class had one of his YouTube videos on, and they are just drooling over this kid. Right. This is amazing. And I was like my young, angsty, competitive, like nothing's good self at that point in time. I'm like so much cooler now. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And very modest. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I saw that, and I'm like, oh, I can do that. So I went home, and I learned it, and I was just like, man, it it felt so good in my hands. It felt so good in my hands and my brain, just playing those songs and feeling that percussion, but like the notes at the same time on the guitar. And here I am, you know, as far as tapping, that's really uh, the only influence as far as learning songs goes. Take it away, Steve. All right, Steve, you're up next. Well, um, I started, like Tyler said, playing acoustic guitar. Mm-hmm. And I started out with like a folk finger style. Right. Um, and I started doing that. And uh, I started recording those songs using my computer at home, Okay. my home studio. And I actually turned out a lot of songs, and I think... Tyler saw a couple of them on YouTube or Reverb Nation, one of the one of the two, and I think that's what actually got him to get me into the band. And from there, I played in a couple bands after that, and I started playing bass. And then I really started to enjoy that a lot more. <laughs> okay, than playing guitar. So m- musically, what were you listening to when you, when you were younger? Um, man, that's a tough question. Everything. Um, and anything. I mean, I would say everything. Uh. Jazz, like fusion jazz, I was mm-hmm. really into. Um, a lot of folk music, bluegrass. Okay. Um, and then I got into the uh, really complex finger style, and that's where it all blossomed from there. Okay, very cool. All right, uh, Brandon Cohill. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I came from or come from a family of musicians. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mom was a classical piano player. My dad was a self-taught blues piano player. Um my older brother is a very uh, talented piano piano player also. And so um, just wanting to be different, I told my parents I wanted to play the guitar. Uh, we had an old beater guitar around the house where uh, my mom would tell me, like, at three years old, I would grab it. And with three strings on it, I would, uh, you know, strum away, not knowing anything. Um, so finally, for I think um, of my sixth year for Christmas, my parents got me a, a little guitar and started me on uh, lessons when I was very young. Mm. So um, uh, I, I had formal lessons with a, with a um, really talented guitar teacher, Reggie Wu, um, and uh, he was very strict on my uh, technique with pentatonics and different scales and stuff like that. And um, so I got really into um, uh, just the formal so- uh, side of guitar playing. I was really into arpeggios. For a very long time and learning to sweep and trying to shred all the time um uh van halen was probably my biggest influence into getting into guitar and all i ever wanted to do was play eruption all the time 
Uh, so that was probably my introduction to guitar tapping, and I never went uh, beyond like three fingers on one string. Um, and now with what we're doing now, it's literally like a math problem, mm. uh, which is something I've never been good at is <laughs> math problems. So uh, it, this band has just completely expanded my um, my uh, musical uh, sensibility, I guess. I, I, I've just learned so much. All right, Brandon Little. Well, uh, I was one of those kids that like dented up all the pots and pans in the house, just banging on anything and everything I could. Um, my family is like very deep in like church and stuff. So I grew up in the church. I grew up with a, a soul background, R&B, funk kind of stuff like that. But I always listened to, you know, different stuff. I always was, was looking to find something that I've never heard before. And so I can experience it, see how it made me feel, see how I liked it. If I didn't like it, you know, it's out the window. If I liked it, it stayed. I was not really like a, a taught musician. I had to learn everything on my own. Um, I lived way far back in the woods, you know, not really near any musicians that were really doing anything with themselves or that I could model myself after. But the Internet helped with that when, you know, it came along and I was able to see things and experience new things. And when I got older, I was able to go out, um, see shows and, and stuff like that. But when I met Tyler... He opened my eyes to a, a whole new world of like stuff that I couldn't even imagine that I'd be doing right now, you know, from the background that I came from. Something completely new to me. I was like, how am I going to do this? Like, he sent me some tracks of what he did, and I'm just like, what am I going to do with these? <laughs> how how am I going to, you know, um, put my my feel into this? But that's what I think gives us such a unique feel and, 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 and groove because we have these interlocking parts underneath these pounding rhythmic drums and, and it's just, you know, in your face and you got to love it. You got to bob your head to it. You got to move some kind of part of your body. But yeah, that's, you know, that's what it is. All right. So you bring all you guys together, all your different influences. When you approach writing a song... Is there a lot of, you know, back and forth? Is there any disagreement? Are you guys all on the same page? You jam it out and then it becomes something? Take us through the, the process of actually writing a song. Uh, that depends on the instrument, probably. Uh, so, I guess, as far as guitars, um, we'll just do this scenario. You know, if I come up with one guitar riff, then I'll just have that guitar riff and then... From there, I'll either start on a bass line or another guitar riff. If I had come up with another guitar riff, then I'll bring that to the table and uh, and show that to Cohill. But if I do a, a bass line next, then that second guitar riff might not come, and then that's up to Cohill to figure out when it comes. Um, and then the drums. And the drums generally, uh, either I'll write them out in Logic, and I'll do like the MIDI format, and I'll write out the drums and then bring that in. Or we'll just jam what we have, and then Brandon will start throwing out ideas. And pretty much all the drums are just between, you know, Little and I, because um, we'll just kind of talk back and forth on it. But the the main thing where, like, everyone really puts in everything is deciding on form, as far mm -hmm. as, like, you know, and form and transitions. Transitions are the hardest freaking thing sometimes. It's like, how do we get from here to there? Right. And, uh you know, that's where the, where it gets really democratic. We'll say, okay, well, let's try this. Let's try that. And we'll try two things. We'll do it both ways. And we'll say, you know, like, raise your hand if you like it kind of thing. Okay. Is it, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say that we are, like, very open with uh, throwing things away. You know what I mean? Like, oh, we've yeah. had so many parts where for two weeks of practicing, we were, like, pretty sure that this is how it was going to go. Then we, we have, like, a long practice one day where we spend the entire um, few hours just on that one riff and if something better comes along, it's yeah. sayonara with the old thing, no matter how much we all liked it, because it usually gets better uh, the right. more we go on. So if you, don't, if you don't love it, then... We you have know, no it's... problem. Good. It. That's good. Mm -hmm. And now, how? I mean, how long does that usually take? Is it different for each... It's probably different for each song, but... How about Top Gun? Because we're we're gonna go into that song. Yeah, next. that's that's a good one. That one came together probably in like a week. Yeah, very quickly. Maybe less. All right. The power of the time. 
Yeah. <laughs> and Brant, Brant's friends sometimes come to our rehearsals. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> like, they are the most enthusiastic people for our band I've ever met in, in our life. So, like, we Tyler brought this riff t- to us, and uh, we started jamming on it. Then Brandon's friends come over about an hour into practice, and, like, we had, you know, it was coming along a little bit enough to where we could play for, like, at least one time through the song without yeah. vocals yet. And, like, the entire time, they're in the background going, like, Whoa! <laughs> that is good. And like, so uh, shout like, out to Big Will. Yeah, Big, Big Will for sure, and John, and John, yeah, yeah. Um, Cypress Dublin McDaniel's, <laughs> and uh, and so uh, uh, with them in the room, like for me, it was just really pumping me up, and like it was kind of like outside people. You know, they're not far removed from the band, but they're not there all the time. So uh, to hear their excitement over what we were doing, kind of. Made it very easy, yeah. I think, for us to want to complete that song. Very good. All right, well, let's hear it right now. We're talking with Black Dirty, and they are going into the studio to record their upcoming EP. And this song will be on it. It is called Top Gun, and you're listening to yourlocalnote.com. That is Top Gun. They are Black Dirty. And you're listening to YourLocalNote.com. The songs that you're hearing on this podcast are going to show up on your upcoming EP, which you're getting ready to go into the studio 
Tell us uh, which studio you're using, who you're working with on this project. Well, uh, we played a show, um, I guess that was September, end of September at a, yeah. at a place in Fishtown called the Gerard Hall. Uh, it was an art collective that has been since shut down. Um, I think they're getting back going. Though. Yeah, let's hope so. So, so anybody listening, they're that awesome. Can help that, do and it. they don't just do music. So mm, they they are probably some of the coolest people that we've ever played for. And um, uh, we played with a band at that show uh, called Leg, Legs Like Tree Trunks, and um, they saw us play. And uh, I was approached by their guitarist Dave, um, who. I, I guess they're from Pittsburgh, right? Yeah, all of them except for their um, their bassist, right? In Philly. And I, they say they're from Pittsburgh, and um, he works for a studio called Tree La- uh, Tree Lady Studios in Pittsburgh. And um, we simply just uh, exchanged business cards after our set. Then we saw their set, and that turned into a, a you know a snowball of conversations right. between all of us and all of them um, because we really were feeling their sound. Um, and we kind of just linked up with him right away um, in terms of friendship. And Great uh, guys. Yeah, and yeah. Tyler has since been talking to them about um, coming there to record, and, and he showed us some of the stuff that he could do. Um, because with our style, with the, uh, with the clean tapping that we do, it's very difficult to find uh, a, an engineer that can really, you know, perfect yeah, that sound. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and because they're a similar style band uh, as us and they do a lot of clean tapping, um, I think we can trust him. Yeah, he's got a good ear for it. Mm-hmm. And he has you know, the knowledge that we don't have as far as recording and mm-hmm. the hardware. So what, what are the things you have to do to prepare for going into the studio? What have your conversations been like uh, with the guys from the studio? Uh, what we have to do is, the way we're going to do it is we're going to record some scratch tracks. So for the people who don't know, that's just going to be a track that's going to be listened to while we do the initial instruments of the recording. And after you get, like, uh, our scratch track is going to be the guitar parts. So I'll record all of our guitar parts to a metronome, perfect tempo. Yeah. And then um, when we get to the studio, they'll have those recordings. And, uh, the you know, Little will listen to those guitar tracks and put the drums down. The entire drive there. He'll be listening to them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, and then I'll get the drum part down, and we probably do the bass part at the same time, maybe just because uh, you get a better feel that way, because, uh, you know, if you have the bass and the drums, the rhythm section recording at the same time, they can kind of play off of each other's uh, human error that gets a- applied to the tempo that they're both playing to. Mm-hmm. And then after that, you throw out that scratch track, and then you just start putting everything on top of that bass that you just made. So we have to record those scratch tracks. And then other than that, it's just, you know, practice, practice, practice. Right. You don't want to waste studio time. Um, and we're not we're not paying per hour. We're doing it as, you know, one bulk sum. Nice. But we do want to get get it done quickly, and sure. that way we have more time to change our mind at the end. Any estimated date of arrival for this EP? Uh, I'd probably say like mid January, and okay. that's nice and like a, a nice late estimate. So that way, you know, pe- you know, there's not gonna be any disappointment. If anything, it'll be earlier than that. Right. Very good. Uh, let's talk about uh, your live performances and where people can find you out in Philadelphia playing next. Well, we uh, <clears throat> have kind of built a home base at the Grape Room in Maniunk. Um, uh, the guy there, Scooter. Uh, Scooter, and, yeah, big shout out to Scooter, uh, <laughs> and Scooter. his four, and his four kids. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he's he's just such a nice guy, and we played there. He gave us our first show there on a Thursday night um, with a couple bands from New York City, and there were maybe twenty five or thirty people there. And um, uh, we treat every show like it's the biggest one in the world, I think. And um, you know, we gave him our all. He he was really into us. Uh, he gave us a headlining spot on a Friday night, and every time we've been back there, it's been bigger and bigger. Um, so he asked us to come play uh, for New Year's Eve this year, um, December thirty first, and that's hopefully going to be a humongous show. Uh, the band Legs Like Tree Trunks is going to be playing with us. Hopefully, their friends um, Little Pirouettes is going to be playing, and I think maybe one other band, but it's not confirmed yet. Um, so yeah, hopefully we're gonna try to make that show as big as humanly possible. 
uh, to bring in the new year, the Black Dirty Way. Okay. okay. All right. Well, uh, what is the Black Dirty Way as far as on stage? You'll Tell people about out. it. If you, if, well, you give them a little hint. You know, a little tease. <laughs> Once so Brandon they come takes out. his shirt off behind the drums, it gets Black Dirty. That happens every show. Uh, Yo, someone stole a shirt last show. Yeah, uh, it was girl, all wet. No, she didn't even steal it. She asked for it. Oh, really? Yeah, and took it home. You should have said they stole it. Like, it's whatever. rubbing it all over her, and the shirt is soaking wet. She put it in a Ziploc found... bag to hold the moisture. Hey, I saw hey, it. Yeah. Oh. Wow. <laughs> it's pretty intense. Uh, that's black, dirty moisture. Yeah. Well, that, that's how we get at the shows. You ask the question, yeah. that's how it gets. Uh, yeah. Br- Brandon, you can write those off as a business expense. <laughs> nice. A $2 t shirt, wrote right. it off, you know, going, going through a whole bunch now, of Now, as far as the individual black, dirty experience, uh, now, Steve, you're getting some solid dance moves from the waist down mm. the whole entire show. <laughs> they call him Steve's knees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, Hopefully you're able to appreciate this Dan Smooth because sometimes your attention will be drawn towards his humongous luscious lips. Okay. <laughs> and you won't even see the dance moves. So he's the whole package. Um and then uh now from the drums you're you're getting some uh, crazy wild poundage from a uh, little and, and sweet dreadlock movement. <laughs> and and pecs. One time yeah. we were playing in a basement and it was like the most like, you know, it was a basement. Rafters mm-hmm. were on the ceiling concrete walls and i guess there was like a nail on the rafter and he's just rocking out and one of his dreads just flies up and gets caught on a nail oh, no. and it didn't it didn't rip it out or anything he just looked like like a black alfalfa with like a really long <laughs> and his uh was perfect <laughs> the rest of that song. and like everybody like you know because i'm facing forward everyone's looking behind me and i'm like what's going on I'm like you know like is everyone just totally amazed and i turn around and i'm like oh shit I didn't say anything. And nobody said anything. Damn until right. I look up. I'm like, oh man. Nice. Nice. A little jealous of that. <laughs> and then, uh, and then, Cohill, uh, he is a comedian as well. That's one of his other passions. Okay. And uh, so you get some jokes from him throughout the night, and uh, and he goes wild on stage. And then uh, Steve. Uh, doing the dance moves while I just sit still and concentrate because I'm just doing, uh, you know. But Tyler keeps his like mane of hair down below his face, so okay. it's like very mysterious. Ah, looking. It's nice. Like, Who is this guy singing, and why can't I look away? <laughs> so, be- I so guess. between uh, Brandon's shirt coming off mm. and then uh, Tyler's long locks, there's only one one phrase for it, and it's black dirty. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So there we go. We, we've sort of summarized the Black Dirty experience New Year's Eve at the Grape Room. We want to uh, definitely check that out. All right, uh, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Thank I can't you. believe this uh, the time has gone by so fast, but we really appreciate you hanging out. We're going to wrap things up uh, with the last song, Why Don't I Climb Trees Anymore? Tyler, take it away. What is this song about? Uh, this song is a hometown song, and uh, it's about you know, the good things and the bad things about a hometown. I, you know, I love my hometown. Um, it is Vincent town, New Jersey and, uh, your hometown, it teaches you about life and, and it really has such a big role in who you become. Sure. Uh, it teaches you so many things and, uh, there comes to a point to where it doesn't have any more to teach you. And mm-hmm. at that point, uh, or maybe a little before, a little after, that's when people either decide to leave the town or they stay there. Right. And everyone knows someone who's, you know, they call them up, one of their friends, and they are still in that hometown. Sure. And then you got someone that you call up, and they're in Egypt, like, right. looking at pyramids. So it's it's kind of pointing that out, and and uh, and it talks about the good parts and the bad parts, I guess, of it, you know, like I said, and... Um, you know, I'd rather I'd rather not go into too much detail because I would like people to kind of interpret that. Sure. You know, I think that that's enough of a, of is that, a kick is that start also for with it. some of your songs you like to people you you allow yeah. people to uh, put like, their own interpretation. I would interpretations. hate for someone to just like love this song for a reason and have this interpretation, and then I say something and screw that up. <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Okay. Well, and like my yes. songs, like you know, you, there's so many different angles to look at it. It's okay. like you know, it's very three dimensional, and I try to do it that way on purpose. Very I good. don't like you know. Very one cool. meaning. So are we going to be playing the song now? Yes, we're going to be playing well, okay. the song now. Now, for the interview today, um, Steve didn't get to talk a lot. So before you know, we cut out, yes. I would like Steve to just do like a nice kiss noise in the microphone so you can hear <laughs> yeah. his luscious yeah, lips. Give it to because him, he hasn't been talking enough, so I feel like that would be a great thing to end the you night put off those with. Lips yeah, to just work just give him like a that. really That's big it. kiss with your lips in the microphone. Get right close the so they can hear yeah. it. Okay. Ready? <laughs> 
<laughs> that was Black Dirty. <laughs> and that is Black Dirty. The song is called Why Don't I Climb Trees Anymore. And, of course, we'll have another podcast up next week. If you uh, would like to contact us, get in touch with us. It's very simple. Uh, you can email us at contact at your local note dot com. Uh, check out the new podcast next week, but also uh, let us know what you think of Black Dirty and don't miss them. New Year's Eve at yeah. the Great Room. Yeah. This is RJ with your local note dot com. Thank mm-hmm. you.